we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you a special presentation of Two Nerds, a podcast. Your home for everything movies, movie, music, video games, and everything in between. With your host, Bunny the Bruiser. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Two Nerds, a podcast, our first episode of 2021. I, of course, am one of your illustrious hosts, Buddy the Person! And I'm Dynamite Jared. A very enthusiastic intro for the first um, uh, episode of 2021 there, Sport. Well, I have a hot take about 2021, okay? It's been all year, and, and 2021, so far... Has been worse than 2020. It's been 2021 for two days. Yes, and it's been worse than 2020 all year. Yeah, you care to elaborate? Yeah, <laughs> are, you, are you just share? Are you just sharing? You damn right, I'll elaborate on it. It's nothing personal. Nothing's happened to me yet. Um, but I mean, let's let's look at it. let's look at this objectively. What, what were we doing in January of last year? You were probably still recovering from your wicked New Year's Eve party hangover. And I was in Colorado Springs, and things didn't go to shit until March. Correct. But it's still shit right now. So we're on pace. Saying. Right now we are on pace for an entire 365 days of total bullshit. That's true. I mean, yeah, at, at this point, 2021... Compared to this point in 2020, was a lot worse. Do you remember? A lot worse. Do you remember? Because at this point in 2020, everything was just was business fine. as usual. But here's the thing, though. I mean, 2020 had a lot. Squeaked a, we even squeaked a Royal Rumble in there before. We did. Everything yeah. fucking exploded. Yeah. But in at the beginning of 2020, everyone was hyping it up that it was going to be like the best year ever. Do you remember that shit? Because, I don't remember that at because all. Because Valentine's Day was like on a Friday. Uh, Cinco de Mayo was on Taco Tuesday. Um, and, and, all, and Halloween was on Saturday, right? Yep, and all the other major holidays were on weekends, like Halloween, 4th of July, Christmas. Um, and New Year's Eve would have been a three-day weekend this year because, I mean, New Year's Eve was on Thursday and then Friday and then today's Saturday. Friday, Saturday. Damn, you're right. So, so 2020 was primed to be incredible. So the hype was unreal, which made it like even fucking worse. But now there's no hype because everyone knows we're already in shit, but we're just hopeful. Well, Valentine's Day, uh, we we got through that one. We did get to have Valentine's Day. Yeah, that is true. What did we do for Valentine's Day? Didn't we go somewhere? Niagara Falls for Valentine's Day. Oh, that's very fun, man. Last year, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember what we did. We it hung... feels like an eternity ago. Oh, yeah, I know. Niagara right? Falls. <laughs> it, feel, it feels like six years ago. Yeah. But, you know what, Jared? We just got to cut the bullshit, and we need to talk about how we fucked up. Because we fucked up bad. Did we but, fuck but, up But bad? it wasn't... I don't know if it was our fault. But, last week, as we know... Was oh, I our big? We were talking about our main subject today. Oh no, was, not yet. No, no, no. Fuck up. Not yet. No. Last last episode was our last episode of 2020. We always count down the memes of the year. And we missed one. And something unprecedented has happened. We jumped the gun. We recorded a little too soon. Because what happened right after we released that episode? Oh, oh, oh Jesus Christ! Some. <laughs> fucking nazi got smacked in the face with a twisted t yes and, and I, in I illyria guess still, like an hour uh, away yeah and i guess we're still riding high on the meme it could have been the meme of the year i think it could have been and it happened right towards the end i don't know if it happened it could have happened while we were recording the podcast we i could have got that, slapped i think that it definitely the video was recorded right as we were podcasting and then um, uploaded later that night. Damn! Imagine what would happen if we I were like. I discovered it the next day. Like, like I just if... woke up and and I saw like you know somebody shared on their Instagram story a video of this dude getting smacked up with a twisted tea can, and I was like, oh, that was pretty violent. Little did I know that it would explode. Yes. Much like the can itself. Yeah. I'm just trying to imagine what it'd have been like if we were like scrolling through Twitter while we were on that episode. 
and we had seen as it. As we normally do. And we would have seen it transpire <laughs> as we were doing a podcast about memes. Was it live streamed? No, I'm just saying, like, if we were, like, on Twitter and we saw it, like, while we oh, were recording. Okay. Yeah. No, we went with, with what we usually do, and we looked at lists. Yeah, that's true. Of, of what memes. And th- those were also, um, you know, preemptive. They, they should have waited another day before yeah. they published their end-of-the-year uh, list. Yeah. And also, but yeah, I... the guy got smacked up with Twisted Tea. Here's my thing with that: I want to see the end of the video because really, yeah, it just stops. Yeah, <laughs> what happened? The after guy that? gets back up and they start fighting, and I want to see what what the what the uh, finale of it all was. Did he like lose consciousness like down the line? Was he like starting to lose blood like crazy? He he recovered from the Twisted Tea pretty quickly, very quickly. But his ego is forever bruised. Yeah. You you can't escape it now. Yeah, it'll live on in meme history. I mean, we can only imagine it ended like the uh, Booker T and Steve Austin brawl. Um, more shenanigans ensuing. Maybe some milk was involved. I mean, wh- that was like what, like a Circle K? Circle K or something. All the Circle Ks are like updated now, so yeah, it's hard to tell. It's like a fucking <clears throat> convenience store of some sort. But yeah, we need an update. We got some hell of a memes. You posted the one of the uh, Napoleon Dynamite pants with the Twisted T logos on them. Yeah, with Rex Kwando. Yeah. And then I posted the one um, today or yesterday of the um, uh, Taguro brothers from Yu Yu Hakusho. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also another thing happened. I failed to mention a pretty big meme over on TikTok, and people had actually called me out on this. I did not mention anything about the Ratatouille musical. I don't even who's, know. If... Who's people? Your wife? Some people. <laughs> Shower me. <laughs> but are you even aware of the Ratatouille musical? Is she properly restarted right now? Yes. Every, your, every, your every, everything. Is your wife restarted? Yes, I we restarted to... my wife. <laughs> No, I don't know about the Ratatouille musical. So, apparent, so I don't know how it started. Someone just, like... Like, TikTok, they were just making, like, stupid songs and shit. And, like, this one girl wrote a song about Ratatouille. And it, like, really caught on. Oh, I thought she was... Talking, I don't know what she was talking about. But anyway. Yeah, so they wrote a She's bunch of... talking about my dog's stinky ass. So they wrote a bunch of songs about Ratatouille. I'm recording over here! Does she know about the Ratatouille musical? Do you know about the Ratatouille musical? No. She no. can't even make up for a horrible interruption by providing knowledge on the Ratatouille musical. But... Keep it down! <laughs> We're working. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, they wrote a bunch of songs that really caught on. They had an even, like... And I thought... I didn't even consider it a meme because it sort of transcended memedom because they actually produced a live stream of this musical with Wayne Brady as Ratatouille at, in Holy it. Holy hell. So it sort of transcended the meme, so I was like, I don't even know if I should bring it up, but yeah, that was a thing that happened this year. It was huge. Um, Ratatouille musical. I, I probably have seen it, and I just didn't. It, yeah, there were tons of memes, like people, like they would just use the songs, like doing stupid shit, and dressing up like rats on the subway and stuff, and yeah, they actually did it on Broadway, I think it was like two or three days ago with Wayne Brady. So. The only rats rat musical that Mazer Laser knows is some weird, stupid thing on YouTube with these like horrible CGI rats, where, where they're the we're the rats. We walk at night. We do something else. I don't. I don't know. It, it, they. She made me watch it one night, and it was horrible. It was one of the worst things I've ever seen. <laughs> Well, I have no idea what you're talking about, and well, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm not. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't ever have an idea. I'm not, I'm not too I'm worried about. about it. But okay, so it is 2021. It is the start of Arnold Month, very highly anticipated by the fan base. Janu Arnold. Janu Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Janu Schwarzenegger, or like well, I can't even remember what I said that one time. <laughs> <laughs> Janu Schwarzenegger. <laughs> And we're starting off with a movie that doesn't even star Arnold Schwarzenegger, buddy. No, Arnold Strong. Have you ever heard of this guy? No, he looks a lot like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm assuming he's the guy that was the stunt double for him 
in Terminator 2 or in Terminator 1 that um, got cast in Reanimator? Yeah, of course. I would have to assume. But. Arnold Strong. And I'm seeing right now, I didn't even notice this. I'm assuming that the guy that was the Woody Allen ripoff is. Um, is Arnold Stang? His name is Arnold Stang. So we got Arnold Stang and Strong. A was match Arnold made in Stang heaven. Stang relevant at all at the time of this movie? Um, I mean, he was like a comedian. Um, at the time, like he wasn't like very big or anything. Um, he was like a voice actor in like some cartoons and stuff. I think the show was like Top Cat or something. He like played like a famous like cartoon character of the Top time. Top Cat, but that was way later, right? Uh, Top, Top Cat. Cat? Top that, Cat. Oh, like t- the cats that fly the oh, airplanes, right? See, now that I see the image of Top Cat, I know exactly who Top Cat is. I remember this shit like Hanna Barbera. You can't oh, even. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but what he- am I thinking of? Um, where the where the cats fly the? You're thinking of SWAT cats. <laughs> SWAT cats, okay, and I, I'm mistaking it because the damn Top Gun and yeah. and the cats that fly the airplanes. But no, he played SWAT Top Cat. Cats. I'm assuming they got him. Woody Allen and Don Knotts were not available for the role. I would assume. That's what I would the, have to the imagine. Whole fucking movie. I'm just like, man. I think they really wanted Woody Allen for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he did all right though arnold stang was okay yeah. it's kind of hard to judge anybody harshly on this movie when arnold strong is in this movie really stinking the joint up he could have learned a thing <laughs> or two from his identical twin yeah arnold schwarzenegger i know right? arnold schwarzenegger really knows how to act um well let's just <laughs> I'm, let, I'm just gonna straight I up i think he's an underrated actor i really do yeah i uh, mean he's definitely gets I, a harsh rap I think that, um... Given the material, I mean... Maybe, maybe as, like, maybe what they judged on is that he could never do any other accent other than his own. But at the <laughs> point where you're casting Arnold Schwarzenegger in your movie, do you want him to do another accent? No, you want... Hercules yeah. in New York, they did. <laughs> well, okay, so a little bit of backstory on this. They, they, they overdubbed Arnold Strong. Sorry, well, I know okay, so so what happened was, they Arnold's manager at the time really wanted him in this film, so they like basically Arnold's manager lied to the studio and was like, oh yeah, Arnold, he's got tons of stage experience, he can do this and that, and by stage oh. experience they were talking about acting, you know, being a thespian, but. He was referring to on the weightlifting stage. So technically, <laughs> he didn't lie. Yeah, he he just bamboozled them. Um, and yeah, the accent they did. He didn't tell. He neglected to tell them about the accent. So <laughs> <laughs> the big fucking um, <laughs> they probably he probably showed up and they're like, wow, this guy looks amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is the most perfect body that I've ever seen. He looks exactly like Hercules, like whatever. He looks Herculean or whatever. This is amazing. And they say, hello, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. And they're like, oh, no. Oh, no, what is this? Uh, Pardon me. I'm Arnold Strong. Yeah. But then unknown Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he was... So, did he... Was had he won any Mr. Universe or anything at this he, point yet? He wasn't Mr. Olympia at the time, but I think he won it like nine times, like right after this. <laughs> Hercules in New York was the thing that shot him up the charts, and then he went on a a tear of nine yes. Mr. Olympias in a row. <laughs> yeah, completely insane. Um, he's pretty massive in this he, movie. He's, he's he's pretty big in the film. There's no way. Um, but yeah, they felt the name was too big, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it was hard to pronounce, so they shortened it to Arnold Strong. Um, and it, would and it, it pairs beautifully with Arnold Stang. I know, yeah, they could have done, like, some nice, like, artwork on the poster, put them, like... They should have just been a comedy duo. I know, after right? The, he should have, Arnold Stang and Arnold Strong, the Arnolds, should have hit the road like that. Yeah. He traded him out for Danny DeVito a few decades later. <laughs> That's did a few films. When did Ar- when did Arnold Stang die? Um, he looked like 2009. So this guy was still kicking. He could have been in Twins. 
Or he uh, could have been, yeah. He or or fucking um, Red Heat. These are two buddy movies that called for Italian sidekicks, and they Arnold Stang got the uh, got the. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's Jewish. Whatever he he does the fucking. But he's music. not sm- he's not small enough. I mean, like the whole thing is like, oh, Arnold's huge, and Danny DeVito's like four eleven. Like this is just like a normal sized dude. Like, Arnold Stang? Yeah, I mean he he's not like a he, he looked like a midget next to. No, nah, but he's not like uncommonly short like Danny DeVito. Is the thing. <laughs> I believe he's Jewish. You're right. You're yeah. right. He's Jewish. I listen uh, when I hear when I hear like you can't talk to a broad like that. I I just think like okay like New York New Yorker yeah like the whole time an authentic New Yorker but was his accent real? I'm not sure. <sighs> it was a little exaggerated, wasn't it? A little bit, <laughs> but not maybe that's just how he talked. As, as the as the mobsters. That's like, true in the movie. But I think also that maybe his maybe his accent was more exaggerated than theirs. But he was a better actor than they were. I'm pulling up. Uh, Top Cat clip. This is. With a little luck, they may never find out we're aboard. We can sleep here every night, mingle with the passengers during the day. Then he can slip us some food. From... So it's kind of his voice. I don't know. He was doing a little bit of an exaggeration, at least from what I can tell from that. His his comic persona was a small, bespectacled yet brash and knowing big city type. Are you so on his in, like? Are you on his like Wikipedia? I just, yeah, I just went to his Wikipedia, and uh, I mean a big city type. Okay, a New Yorker. Yeah, he's a New Yorker. New Yorker, and he was born in New York. Yeah, so it must be authentic. But yeah, in comedies you kind of got to play it up a little. So maybe he was, you know, cheesing it up for the cameras and stuff. And but they they needed Woody Allen. Yeah, <laughs> they needed something. Yeah. It, it should have been Woody Allen. All right, I'm just That's gonna. I the whole time. I'm just gonna straight up this, say this it. This poor man's Woody Allen here. Before we get too deep into the film and start discussing it more in depth, I'm just gonna straight out say it. This film was a fucking blast. <laughs> it's you rated it pretty low. I had to see your rating when I. What did I rate it? I, rated it? I thought two I rated and a half. I thought two I did. Th- I thought I, I might have to upgrade that to three. I thought I did three. Mine was a three. It's. It was way, way better than I thought it was going to be. And for Arnold Schwarzenegger's first movie ever... Oh, no, I gave it three. What? It was two and a half last night. Don't change it now and then act I like know. you said that the whole time. Don't act like I'm fucking crazy. All right, man. I see you adjusting it right now. I no, I was checking reflection. it, Cat. I can see the reflection in your eyes. All right, man. Don't get butt hurt. Or is that I, your I, rating? That, I, that might be your that, rating. Well, does it have a picture of me? No, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, goddamn, I did do it two and a half. You're it's... goddamn right you did. I'm not stupid. Yep, I gotta change that. I know but... how to count stars. If there's one thing I know how to count, it's stars. Just like the man who got smacked with the twisted T. Yeah. <laughs> Knows about the stars. Yeah, this movie's really fun. Uh, it's, I think... A worthy addition to any, not any Arnold movie, but like when you think of Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, generally you think that they're going to be really fun. Yeah. And this is a fun movie. I'm surprised that it's not really talked about as much as, you know, maybe even like Conan. Yeah. This is more fun than Conan, the Barbarian. This is. (laughs) This is a, a much more fun movie. Conan has some good lines in it and a couple good scenes. For the most part, that movie is boring. I'm sorry. I don't, you know... I have wanna, to rewatch it. I haven't seen it in years. I don't want but... to offend the people. I mean, I might have to rewatch it too, but the last time I watched, boring. Yeah. Hercules in New York, never boring. Um, it's just nonstop from the beginning. It's like, like, it's it's goofy as hell. It's cheesy. I mean, you can tell it's obviously very, very, very low budget. Um, I won't say it's an essential Arnold movie. Like, it's not like 
something you have to watch. It's right? not essential, but, but I, think, I don't even think. But I don't think Conan the Barbarian's essential no. either. But I think that like if you're a fan of Arnold, like if you like his movies and you haven't seen this one, like you definitely like need to check this out. Like you know what I mean? My little brother is the biggest Arnold fan alive. You know he collects all the movies and and everything, and he's always undersold this to me. Has um, he seen it? I was just watching. Yeah, of course he's seen it. And I was just watching it, and I was like, "This, this is not bad at all. This is this is fun. <laughs> this is good. This is funny." I mean, it's unfortunate that I was watching it by myself. Yeah. You know, it's it's a kind of movie that I think is enjoyed with a big group of people. Right. Yeah. I also watched it alone, but yeah, it could have benefited from um, having a group around. You know. But, but let's not. The movie's good. The movie's fine. It's very low budget, and it, it is corny. But here's the thing: is that it, it's a comedy. It's a comedy movie. Like it doesn't even try and hide the fact that it's supposed to be played up for laughs. It's very self-aware, and um, but let's not shy away from the fact that Arnold is horrible. <laughs> he. <laughs> He's lucky that he's like the most charismatic person on the face of the earth that, you know, just, and he just looks the way that he does that, you know, he's able to get your attention just based on his physique and mannerisms. Yeah. His acting is not there at all in this. He doesn't even try. And like, <laughs> it's very like stone faced. Like, it's like, well, I want to go to the human world. <laughs> It's just like... But I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doth not Zeus, like... <laughs> I'm not defying you, Zeus. <laughs> but did the director even try to get him to emote at all? I Like, do you think... Because, like, I mean, he's a big dude. Like, do you think maybe they were, like, nervous around him? Like, intimidated by yeah. him? Yeah. I don't know. They hired actors to get their ass kicked by him. Yeah. Yeah. The fight scenes are awful. I know we just came in and said that this movie's good and that it was fun, but the and, it were, and I'm opening up by saying Arnold was terrible and the, <laughs> the fight, fight scenes are awful. But I mean, it's true. Like, what was the one fight scene like where he was? They were like fighting with like a board. Okay, like, the, he just the, okay, up, like a giant board. The funny. Okay, so there. I guess we should go through the plot a little bit before we get to the board. So. Herc as you said, Hercules, he's bored. He wants to go to the human world. So they're shooting <laughs> Mount pick up a board. So they're shooting Mount Olympus and Mount Olympus is in Central Park. You can see like brick walls in the background. You can hear traffic like honking horns. Like in the background I of the hear, I didn't hear any traffic, but Oh yeah. I might have not been paying as much attention as you. Yeah. But so they send him to Earth and he's like flying down through the sky and They he don't send him, he just Oh, wait, they do. Yeah, because Zeus strikes him with the lightning. Yeah. And then he just, like... He flies by a plane. He flies by that plane. He's, like, waving through the window. <laughs> yeah, the old lady needs oxygen instantly because yeah. of how sexy he is. Of course. He so, was so handsome. Yeah. <laughs> there was a man outside. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. You're remembering all the... Because I watched it about a month ago at this point. I mean, you're remembering all these. You watched it, like, yesterday. I watched it last night. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, he lands on. But like I did a... write down oxygen on the plane. She doesn't need the oxygen, but um, she starts telling her little story about the the gorgeous man outside that's falling from the sky, and and their reaction to this is is we need to deploy the oxygen masks and put this on this lady. She's obviously not getting enough oxygen to her brain. <laughs> right. Or, yeah. She's or going something. nuts. They're put the mask on her and she's ah! <laughs> yeah and he like lands on a boat right and he's he like lands in the ocean he lands in the ocean and um then all the goddesses are begging zeus to save him oh he's he's in the middle of the ocean great zeus please please show mercy to hercules and so zeus is like okay it's done look there's a boat and so the boat rolls up, and they pick up Arnold. And then he gets into, like, a little bit of a scuffle with some of the... He gets into a scuffle because, the, for some reason, 
by the way, one of the, the best lines in the movie that actually made me laugh was, you know, they pick him up on the boat and the captain's like, what were you doing out in the middle of the ocean? I was swimming. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so the, the they pick him up on the boat. They try to get him to work on the boat. But he's having none of it, and he just starts beating the shit out of all the crew members because he won't do any work. And then when they pull up to New York, they don't want him. They don't want to let him leave. Yeah. What the hell? You just found this guy stranded in the middle of the ocean. You're not going to let him get off your boat now? No, they want to keep like him. They're rescuing him. And that's when they get in the second scuffle, right, with the board. Yeah, the guy runs off the thing and finds just these random dudes and says, you know, like a. I think it's like 50 bucks. I'll give you 50 bucks to whoever can... Beat up this guy. Take this guy down. And he's got a hell of a fit in this scene. Like, he's wearing, like, the the button-up blue shirt and the hat. He's looking good. (laughs) Well, wasn't he... (sighs) He was shirtless on the boat. He was shirtless on the boat, okay? And that's the meme, um, if you've ever seen, where it's always like, oh, 12-year-old me after doing this, this, and this. And it's shirtless Arnold in jeans and the beanie, like, yeah. running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think at one point during the fight, he, like, does, like, a chest bump, like, through a table. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's incredible. On the land fight, I think. Yeah. Yeah, they come at him with the table, and he just chest bumps through it. Um, he, he, struggles, he struggles a little bit more with the people than I would like to see Hercules struggle. I just want to see that. I mean, he was manhandling people on the boat, but when he got to land and he was fighting five guys at once or whatever, and he was kind of wrestling. He with was the kind board of struggling. Like, bit. yeah, like I did wish that they would have made because, like, I mean, he's a demigod. Like, they should have made him a little bit more powerful. You know, like he's still struggling in those like big matchups with like five on one. You know, yeah, he handles the bear no problem. That's fine. <laughs> but the the, the quote unquote bear, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, so yeah, so now Arnold's in New York, and he uh, beats the hell out of all these guys, and now Woody Allen sees him doing all this, and Woody Allen decides that he's going to help Arnold out by saying, come on, let's get out of here! <laughs> yeah. And and they take off, and they get a cab. Uh, oh, I forgot, chari- I forgot about this, this is a great scene. <laughs> a chariot. Yeah. Um, you are immortalized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, they get the cab and they pull off in, in Central Park or whatever. And then... The cabbie wants paid, obviously. He wants paid $2. And for some reason, Woody Allen expects Arnold to pay. Yeah. I, I don't... And I don't Ar- Arnold's... I, from Because now I'm remembering the scene. Arnold's just like, what does Dole... What does Dole have to do with anything? Like, he doesn't yeah, understand. It's like slang for money. He's like, two bucks. <laughs> bucks. <laughs> what are these bucks? Why? <laughs> so he gets Why are you pissed. talking about these animals? <laughs> I remember that. He's like, what do these animals have to do with this? <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I kind of got mad. I was like, is this Woody Allen guy going to be like a total scumbag? The because entire... just randomly, it's like, pay the cat. Yeah. Like, no. like it was, his, that... it was his idea to take the cab. Yeah, it was your idea to get the cab, so pay the fucking man. Yeah. But Arnold's not having it. He gets pissed. He fucking tosses the guy into a bush and then tips the cab over. He flips the cab over. Yeah. Yeah, you don't mess with Arnold. Yeah, and then they then they move on to the uh, to the uh, the training grounds for the for the college. Oh, it's like, yeah, it's like it's like a whatever. track meet thing. Yeah, and these are these are well seasoned athletes. Um, that Arnold decides to show how to really throw a discus. Yeah, <laughs> who do you, he helped the the Olympic uh, Greek team. Something that, like that. He, he was like, "Oh yeah, I helped Greek t- Greek Greek Olympics." But yeah, he threw the the disc. It went, I you know, the the Mister Perfect uh, kind of photography 
or uh, videography here where it just like throws it. It shows a bunch. And of, everyone like, looks, whoa, and then and then like, it goes reactions. Real. I think did, didn't he like, didn't he do somewhere. like didn't he do like a long jump too where he, he just did like a long jump and he landed in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that they had the budget to do, like, one scene where they could bring, like, somebody that's worked on, like, a Bruce Lee movie or something in. So they could do, like, one of those shots of, like, the like the jump kick in, yeah. like, in the old martial arts movies where it's just, like, a still image of them just, like, flying across the screen. Right, yeah. Of just Arnold, like... In the air. <laughs> shirtless, because I think he took his shirt off before he threw the javelin. Of course. Yeah, he did. it's in my notes. Has to take his shirt off to throw the javelin. <laughs> he didn't need that for the uh, for the discus, but um, for the javelin, he had to take the shirt off. And there's several moments in the movie where he inexplicably needs to take his shirt off. Of course, as you want. One of the best moments of, of the whole film, I don't remember when this happens, but it's like when he's on the date. He's on the um, date, and they see the, the poster, which I think... Was it's an actual literally film. the poster for the movie. I don't think it was for this one. Or it might have been. I don't know. But he's looking at... Well, I'm looking at the poster of the movie right now. And it's got um, Arnold Strong here on the uh, on the chariot with the bunch of horses. And I seem to recall that that's pretty much the same image, um, if I recall correctly, the same image that they're looking at when they're looking at the the Broadway poster for the Hercules thing. It could have been, but I remember, like, she said, oh, it's just a movie or whatever. It's a it's a film or motion picture. And he's just like, it looks nothing like me. Look at this. And he, like, takes his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Look nothing like me. <laughs> uh, it looks nothing like me. Look. <laughs> oh, no, please put your shirt back on. Yeah. Stop, you can't do this. And he just starts doing a double bicep. <laughs> yeah. <and> like, <laughs> 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 the, the director was like well fuck it the one thing this guy can do is, is do bodybuilding poses so we might as well just get him to do it I think he does like the the, the peck bounce uh, yeah. before he throws the javelin and stuff yeah there's a couple other scenes are, where he just he just finds ridiculous reasons to take his shirt off I like when they uh, find the statue of Atlas like holding up the world. He's like Atlas doesn't he, look like that. <laughs> he's like, he's like, or she's like, oh, that's Atlas. He's like, oh, poor likeness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and how does nobody just like start to think like? I mean, uh, there's a couple times where they mention like, eh, this guy's a little weird, but he introduces himself as Hercules and he's flipping cabs and everything, and Woody Allen like. He, like, reads a book later, and he's like, wait a minute, Hercules and Zeus? Yeah. You you fucking never heard of Hercules before? Yeah. Did you not graduate from elementary school? And doesn't Woody Allen, he sees, like, the other god that comes to visit him, doesn't he see him, like, fly away or whatever? Yeah, he sees him fly out the window. He he falls up! He (laughs) fell up to the sky! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Uh, when... Uh, the when the um, when they're doing the sports thing, and the like college professor or whatever invites Woody Allen and Arnold uh, or uh, Hercules out to tea, and and Woody Allen thinks that it's like drugs. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and his response, he's like, "No, tea, the conventional social drink." <laughs> Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, man. I had to write that down. I said the conventional social drink. So that's how I'll be asking people to tea from now on. Yeah. The conventional social drink. Yeah. We've been drinking a little tea at my house. My wife took your uh, your uh, situation as inspiration, and we finally set up our coffee pot that we got for the wedding. We've retired the Keurig. We set up the whole pot. Uh I just told her to make sure you do the test runs first, the with the water. <laughs> oh, okay. So you you had a, a normal coffee pot and you guys have been doing like that reusable Keurig with the um with the right. coffee grounds that you put into it. Right, yeah, but we decided to make the switch because I mean like we're 
we each of us drink a cup anyway, so we may as well just make like a because like the coffee machine we have, you can make like a full pot or half or whatever. So like we were right, like, and with the Keurig, you do only cups. Yeah, at a time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good switch for you guys. I don't drink coffee, so you know, Mazer Laser usually does the, just the single cup on the thing. But I'll, you know, well, she gets free grounds from Starbucks, so I'm sure she's got some paper filters here. So yeah. I'm sure she'll brew a big pot of coffee that I'll dump 75% of down the down the sink. <laughs> down the sink. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, so yeah, a bunch of shenanigans and suit. I can't remember everything that happens. You're a little more Where fresh Where did he get the me. suit? I don't know. He doesn't like, have any money. He when, prob- when he shows, when they show up to the damn meeting with for the conventional social drink, he, he has like a, a nice got- suit on already in his size, which is not an easy feat. No, not uh, an easy fit. No. For me, how tall is Arnold? Uh like six two, six three. Like he's not like that uncommonly it's ridiculous. tall. Ridiculous! It's ridiculous that he never became a professional wrestler. I know, Isn't right? Isn't that absurd to you? He becomes a professional wrestler in this movie. Yeah. For some reason, he's not working with Vince McMahon Senior. No. Um, but he's working with some random bum promoter. But, but that that would have been the territory at the time, right? Like WWF yeah, had yeah, New York. WWF, yeah, WWF. Yeah, they had the, New York, right? Yeah, like that New area. York was the territory, and and Bruno was probably the champion at the time. Yeah, or like Pedro Morales or or Bob Backlund or one of those guys, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, nobody's heard of Hercules. Uh, when they're at the uh, whoa. I owe everybody a conventional social drink. There you go, yeah. Uh, um, when they're when they're in the uh, when they're having the tea or whatever, and then randomly the the girl's boyfriend oh, yeah. or whatever shows up. I'm almost positive that she refers to him as her boyfriend when they're practicing for the for the track meet or whatever. Right, but then she's just dating Arnold later. Well, then the like instantly is offended when uh, he comes in, Arnold's there or whatever, and Arnold's like, "Is this your lover?" <laughs> 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 He's like, "Hey, you disrespect the lady or whatever. Do so you apologize right now?" I would not apologize. Hercules apologizes to no one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but the guy punches him in the chest. Does so absolutely like, nothing. Breaks his hand. You have striked Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like lifts him up and then like what? It says like he broke like two of his ribs later on. Yeah, he just um he freaking just lifts him up and yeah, he broke his ribs and, and the guy loves him after that. Yeah, they're totally he's fine. He's just later he's later seen like Yeah, even though he broke my ribs, he's a hell of a guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's literal the line is literally something to that effect. He's like, Yeah, there's something about that guy. I really like him. Even though he broke my ribs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so wild, bro. And the and the girl too, she's talking to um her dad, who's the college professor, and uh Hercules has asked her out since he's proven that he's much more man than her lover. Yeah. yeah, and the dad's uh, just like, "Well, you gotta go, you gotta do it." And she's just right. like, "She's like, no, he's crazy." He, she's building up like she's not gonna go, and like, he's insane. He's got a screw loose. He's wild. He's out of control. And, and he asked me out, and and her dad's like, "Well, naturally, you said yes, right?" And she's just like, "Yeah." <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, I said yes." <laughs> <laughs> and now they're on a carriage, and, and a bear has escaped from the zoo. Okay, and so... when we first see so, the bear, so, it's like stock footage of a bear. Okay, so we see the bear in the zoo. It's stock footage of a bear. It's also nighttime. And also when they're reporting that the bear is loose to the police, it's also nighttime. But then every time it cuts back to Arnold on the date, it's during the day. Well, no, there was this part... There was a part where they were going down the park, and it was like dusk or no not dusk dawn no which dawn one it's, an er, it's an early it morning dusk. carriage ride it was dusk it, it was like it was pretty dark out but you could still see kind of a little bit of sun 
And and then this bear inexplicably transforms into a guy a in a man, bear suit. A man bear. <laughs> like a very, very, very bad bear costume. And uh and this bear just turns up. I don't even know if it scared the horses or not. I think it did. I think the, the carriage driver uh that was immortalized by having Hercules anyone that gave Hercules a ride in this movie was immortalized from having Hercules ride in their chariot. Yeah. Um but the the carriage stops, the girl's screaming, Hercules wastes no time. He jumps right off this thing and proceeds to beat the ever living shit out of this bear. Like Brock Lesnar style. Yeah. Like, takes it down, <laughs> he just sits on it and just starts <laughs> punching it in the face. And 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 this this woman is on the on the carriage. She faints. <laughs> well, at first she's screaming, "Beat him up! Beat him up!" What a terrible woman! That's like just screaming, "Beat, beat this destroy, bear! Destroy, destroy this innocent animal with your bare hands!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, I think she's terrible. She's horrible. <laughs> she's just screaming, "Beat him up!" and then she faints. Yeah. Yeah. Um, apparently there are some shots, because I was looking this up, apparently there's some shots in there where you can clearly see the guy's ankles and human shoes underneath the bear, but I didn't notice it when I was watching it. I didn't notice it either, I was just too busy laughing at the, at the ridiculousness of the entire scenario. And so, after, I mean, listen, if you go on a first date with a girl and you fucking just defeat a bear in hand-to-hand combat i think i think the deal is pretty much sealed yeah right like you you can't not go on more dates with this guy right Maisie. right like if if me and you went on our first date and i was able to dismantle a bear with my bare hands like you'd be incredibly impressed right there would be more dates to come right yeah like defeat a bear in hand-to-hand combat (laughs) <laughs> like if we're walking through the woods you know we, we we just had a great conventional social drink together and and a bear just jumps out of the woods and I waste no time in taking him down and knocking him out and protecting you from this bear and displaying my masculinity in such a way that I could be dominated by no animal first off it's probably sex on the first date at that point right <laughs> you have to imagine I can't hear. I can't hear anything she's saying. By the way, I'm just. I'll. I'll, com- I'll confirm to you whatever she says. She's. She's just smiling right now. I think without a doubt. I think it goes without saying that. That it's sex was well, well. Listen, I did a lot less than that, and we had sex on our first date. Well, there so... you go. Yeah. <laughs> I did a lot less than fight a bear. I think that if I was able to display, my, my. Uh, just dominant masculinity in such a way that I, I don't think that any woman could could resist. So I, I think it goes without saying that it's inferred at that point that Hercules had sex with, with this girl at the, uh, not girl, woman, um, yeah. after defeating the bear. Because they're going on more dates after this. And I only bring up their other dates because one where they're walking through Central Park and these children just run up to Arnold for no reason and Arnold just gives them the bicep and they yeah. feel his muscles before Arnold ruffles their hair yeah. and and sends them off. Incredible. Yeah. The 60s yeah. were a weird time, man. You could touch people. It was 1969. It was, it was close. And it was released in 70, I think. Yeah, probably. Um... So from there, I don't know, from what I remember, Zeus is just getting real pissed off because even though he sent Hercules to Earth, he wants him back. Uh, yeah, he, he's been bitching the whole time. Yeah. But at some point, they take away his, like, godliness or something. I can't remember when. Well, so the the deal is is that Hercules summons Nemesis to not, not the much-feared Resident Evil boss and antagonist, um, just a regular. You mean Zeus, Zeus summons? Yeah, 
Yeah, you said Hercules summons. I know. Nemesis. We'll wait for them to pull off and then force him off and then get it. I apologize. You have to edit that out. I'm in the middle of business here, so you're going to have to do it or else it's going to get really cold. <laughs> has, the, has, the, has the dinner arrived? Yes, the dinner is arrived. Hold on, hold on. We're going to have to... We're gonna have to Go to a message from our sponsor right now. All right, so we're back. So, yeah, so as <laughs> as we were saying, uh, Zeus sends down... Nemesis, okay. Yeah. And um, on the way... Yeah, on the way back to... Um, on the way to Earth, Hera... Zeus's wife, who fucking hates Hercules, that's like another subplot. Uh, subplot that's been going on in this movie, pulls Nemesis aside and convinces her to instead um, of bringing Zeus or bringing Hercules to Pluto's realm, which is basically God. I'm sorry. Um, hell, yeah. It's basically hell. Instead of just bringing him there, still do that, but also strip him of his divinity temporarily. And they do this... They drug him. By drugging him. (laughs) (laughs) By drugging his drink in a bar. (laughs) I always remember in high school um, uh, when we would learn about the Greek mythology and stuff, how my English teacher would always say how the Greek gods were always portrayed as more human than other um, other divine beings in other cultures where they the the Greek gods always you know they had emotions and they acted on emotion rather than you know logic that godly beings should probably be acting with and that right. is very very evident in this movie and it made me think about that a lot when I was watching this movie I'm like yeah my teacher did say that it, you know, and it's true. I mean, Zeus, and it's applied and inferred to a lot in this movie that Zeus was kind of a ladies' man. Yeah, I always knew that through uh, mythology. He can never keep it in his pants. That's why he has yeah, like a billion he's kids. Going around just banging everyone, and that's how Hercules came to be, and all of his other kids. And that's why Hera hates Hercules because it's not her son. It's yeah, some some pathetic mortal's son. But yeah, they drug his drink, he loses his power, and just in time for him to get into a weightlifting contest with another bodybuilder, who I might add, might might add, God, I can't talk. My mouth is just watering thinking of this Mexican food that's just arrived. Um, Monstro. Monstro, yeah. He skipped leg day, buddy. He did. It's, 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 it's incredibly legs, evident, yeah. His legs were not as impressive as Arnold Strong. And his upper body was very impressive. He he had some very bad skin. They did some close-up shots of him. His, his skin was not good. But, uh, yeah, he had small legs. Chicken yeah. legs. He wasn't as built as Arnold Strong up top, either. No, well... Arnold made sure that if you're going to cast another bodybuilder in this movie, it can't, can't be the level of me. To be fair, now at the time, there were very few bodybuilders that were probably on his level, because he would go on to win nine Mister Olympias in a row, or something like that. But was it nine? I swear to God, it was like six. I don't know how. I can look it up real fast. I'm I'm on his Wikipedia right now. The Austrian Oak. Um, let's see here. Seven times. He was Mr. 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 Olympia seven times. Still quite impressive. I I mean, I'm sure. Um, Okay, so he won the uh, amateur Mr. Olympia in 1967 and then Pro Mr. Universe in, in 68, 69, and 70. So the year that they were filming this, he was Mr. Universe. And then right after this, he would go on to win, yeah, Mr. Olympia in 1970, 1971, 
72, 73, 74, 75, and then again in 1980, right before he broke out as a mainstream film star. So, so what happened during those off years? Was did he lose or was he not competing? Oh, let's see here. Um, I want to look at. Okay, so. We'll do his filmography is what I will look at here. And man, it's tough because in those off years, he only did three movies. Stay Hungry, The Villain, and um, Scavenger Hunt. Um, all of which I don't think that he uh, probably played. I, Stay Hungry, he plays a pretty prominent role. He's like on the cover of the movie. I think. And then um, he plays the handsome stranger in the villain. Um, I don't know. Kirk Douglas is Cactus Jack in the villain. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is third billing on Wikipedia, though, as the handsome stranger. So only three movies done. So now I'm going to have to go back to his... um, his bodybuilding uh, career. Okay. Lou Ferrigno proved not to be a threat. <laughs> and a lighter than usual Schwarzenegger convincing, convincingly won the 1975 Mr. Olympia. And then it says he came out of retirement, however, to compete in the 1980 Mr. Olympia. So he wasn't competing, yeah. Okay. So what was he doing? I don't know. That's I mean, still still working out because I mean that's when Pumping Iron and stuff came out. It was like seventy seven. Yeah, but Pumping Iron documents one of his Mister Olympia victories because that's the movie where he smokes weed after he wins, right? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure that's where that footage comes from, where he's fucking token up. Listen, after- all I remember from that film is when he's talking about coming constantly. That's the best thing ever. <laughs> I still haven't seen uh, Pumping Iron, but I, I'm, it's my impression that that's where that came from. And I've definitely seen the scene where he's uh, talking about basically weightlifting is like ejaculating. Yeah. He's like, so now I'm, com- I'm coming in the gym, I'm coming at home, I'm coming in bed. I'm, I'm coming, coming everywhere. All the- it's he's- amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Arnold was training for his role in Conan, in Conan uh, when he it says he got into such good shape because of the running, horseback riding, and sword training that he decided he wanted to win Mr. Olympia one last time. Huh. Well, there you go. I can't believe he was shooting Conan before I thought that didn't come out till like 82. Before what? The first Conan movie. When did that come yeah. It came out in, um, I mean, it might have, he was training for it in 1980, so it might have came oh, okay. out gotcha. in 1981 or 82. Yeah, it came out in 82. Okay, and yeah, now I get it. I thought, never mind, I misunderstood. For some reason, I thought that, like, he, like, Conan came out already, and he was like, oh, I was in such good shape, or whatever, that, whatever, but yeah, if he was still shooting it, then yeah, that makes sense. All right, so, so yeah, so they send the so they send the person there. She drugs the drink. He loses to Monstro in in the uh, weightlifting competition. Here's my thing, okay. He loses his divine power. Did he lose it in the middle of the contest, or did he was he able to just lift 750 pounds just based purely on his physique? I think it was implied that he, because he lost it when he drank the drink. I just think he was still strong enough to do all the rest, except for that last one. When he did 750, he did it twice. Ah. Like, he got it up, and he pumped it an additional time. That's and true. And put it down. And then when they went to 1,000, he couldn't even get it up. Yeah. And I was like, dude, he was dominating this guy before they got to it. Old Monstro. But regardless, he loses to Monstro... I, he had a second name. I can't remember what it was. It was like Monstro... The Magnificent or something. Like Monstro something. the Magnificent or something. And then... Yeah. Um, 
the the mobsters we we forgot to mention that Woody Allen was muscled into <laughs> signing a contract with the mob citing uh old Hercules over to the mob so they could make money with him for the uh, res- for the wrestling stuff right for the wrestling stuff and then but, after that didn't cuz okay so but Pluto. they were involved in the in the weightlifting contest as well. Well, because Pluto or whatever, when he finds out Hercules doesn't have his god power, he goes and bets money against Hercules in the weightlifting. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah. And so they think that Hercules threw the contest, and they chase him down, and... This chase scene was horrible. (laughs) It went on for so long, and I just did not know what the fuck was happening. Like, it was so hard to tell who was where and what was what. That's when he steals the chariot, right? Yeah, that's the best part, is when it's cutting to him, just... Oh, my God. They they definitely could not put up no animals were harmed in the making of this film. (laughs) Because Arnold was destroying these horses. He's on this chariot just whipping the shit out of the horses just nonstop. He's just, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, just just continuously just smacking the horses. Like, I think you only have to smack them, like, one or two times to get them up to full speed. And then they just kind of go until you pull back on them, right? I'm, well, not an, just, I'm not an equestrian. I don't know. He's just beating the shit out of them. <laughs> well, I know based on Zelda that, like... Right, yeah. I know you, the carrot you, philosophy. Yeah. You kick him five times and he's yeah. going full speed. And even then you have to spread it out a little bit to really get full speed because if you just do five carrots, he's going to get too you don't, tired, you don't yeah. quite reach it. Yeah. So um but he's just beating the shit out of these goddamn horses, but that's the best part of the entire chase. The rest of it's just cars doing donuts through Central Park. I'm just saying every park in this movie is Central Park. And we failed to mention Throughout the entire film, there is this ridiculous, like, I don't know what you would call it, like, the, it's like, it's like traditional, like, Greek or, like, Italian, like, music, like, the, da, 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 da. <laughs> I, I swear I wrote that, and I must have missed it. I, okay, I tried to write music, and my pen died. The music is horrible. Oh, the music's phenomenal, man. <laughs> That's ter- It's terrible. Oh my god, the music is so bad. You haven't been to enough Italian weddings because that shit just plays and, you know. Well, it's good. I, I good guess shit. Not. It's good shit, I, my man. I prefer my weddings to play Phil Collins. Hey, like mine did, but it is a little bit overdone. The music because it's literally the same track like the entire time, basically the whole film. It's awful. <laughs> I can't get down to it. This movie would have been a five without that music. And so, um... They lead him they, to, like, some, like, warehouse or something. He's, like, fighting with all these barrels around him. He's fighting He's fighting all the mobsters. He's getting his ass kicked. Um, who is it? It's not Apollo. Who is the damn... I've... They send Atlas, don't they? They send Atlas and, um... And somebody else. Samson. It's... Samson's the other one. And Samson isn't even a Greek god. Samson is from the Bible. <laughs> Mercury sends them, though. And right. Zeus gets pissed because Mercury wasn't supposed to send them. He was supposed to just let them. He wanted Hercules to be humbled by the mortals. But then Zeus just kind of decides. It's like, my son can't get his ass kicked by He's these like, jabronis. Yeah, the... No son of Zeus will be bested by a mortal. And he gives Arnold back his powers at the very last moment when he throws the barrels down on all the monsters. <laughs> He's, like, tipping them over, yeah. Yeah, and then Arnold just, just kind of... Well, Hercules just kind of decides to go back to Olympus. Yeah, they're uh, having, like, a heart-to-heart moment on, like, the top of this building or whatever, and Woody Allen's like, I've never been up this high before. And then all of a sudden, fucking Arnold walks away. He's like, Zeus, bring me home. And then he just, like, fucking abandons this guy. <laughs> he abandons Woody Allen and then talks to him through the radio. In this horrible... Oh, my so God. So here, here's what happened with that. Because I had to read this online. So that's the original dub voice actor? That's the original dub voice actor because... That's the only line that they didn't get Arnold saying because they never intended to use Arnold's actual voice. So they don't have any 
clip of Arnold saying those lines, so it's still just the dubbed over lines. But even still, they put this horrible effect on it. Yeah, it's like a weird you filter, just can't yeah. can't understand what he's saying at all. I think I, I caught the important things where it's like, I consider you a friend, and like all this stuff and I, I'll never be far away all you have to do is just think of me uh, or something yeah. I don't even know but it's awful yeah they I, have like I, some weird like radio filter on it and stuff and yeah it sounds I, awful I literally wrote horrible radio voice yeah <laughs> and then he has a heart to heart with Zeus you know Zeus forgives him and then Zeus decides man New York sounds fucking badass <laughs> and the movie ends with the cliffhanger of Zeus dropping down from the sky, and I am still waiting for the sequel. Zeus in New York. When's it coming, buddy? I don't know, man. I feel like we should get a Kickstarter going. I mean, I'm sure the actor has long since passed. Uh, I but... think this will be our, the one of the one of the best two nerds production uh, productions. Oh, so we're gonna be ever. producing. We're gonna be producing the film. We're gonna be producing the film, and you'll probably be in the director's chair as well. I would imagine. Um, he passed yeah. away in '83, so he's. We will have to recast the role, unless we can conjure up his spirit to come back. Uh, I mean, he was just a bearded guy. He wasn't very. He wasn't very distinguishable, and we're making the movie you know, however many years later. I think that at this point, people expect another actor. They'll just be happy that they finally got the sequel that they've been waiting for since 1970. Maybe we can get Arnold to play Zeus. I mean, he'd be slightly older. And then... That's true. Whoever the next... And then what? You get John Cena to play the new Hercules, and you're good to go. And that's it. Right. In, In a cruel twist of fate, they've switched accents. Yeah. Uh, I like this movie. I'll probably never watch it again. I would watch it again with the right group of people, and I'd probably want to watch, like, some of the dub just to see... Like, I want to watch, like, a side-by-side, like, comparison. Weren't we supposed to watch the, like, just, like, clips of the dub just to have context? I can't remember. neither of us did. Yeah, I remember I looked up, like, one clip. It was just, like, a 30-second, like, side-by-side real fast. But, like, I'm sure they have one where, like, they have everything back-to-back. Well, in in today's day and age, we're remaking every fucking movie. And a lot of them don't need need remakes. remakes. This is a movie with such a low budget. And I think that this movie would be a amazing candidate for a, a contemporary remake. Yeah. I really do. Just think about it. Think about this. The Rock has already played Hercules once before. Uh-huh. If you made, remade Hercules in New York with The Rock, that's money. I, I would go see that in a fucking heartbeat. With, like a, with a bigger budget, you know, you get good special effects when The Rock's coming down to Earth and all this stuff. And The Rock is just so naturally funny and he can actually act, I think that you would you would make a really good remake with that. I think that it could surpass the original. A remake that could potentially surpass the original. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if they do it, like, with modern sensibilities, with love and affection for the original, and I mean, like, if you're not trying to be serious with it, like, if you do it, like, a little corny as well, like, obviously have, like, a real fucking bear, but, I mean, like, I think it could be... It Pretty could good. be an absurdly CGI bear. Yeah. And I mean, but regardless, I think that a remake of this movie with The Rock and you know something, honestly, I I would like to think I'm almost positive. The Rock The Rock's gotta be a fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? You'd imagine, yeah. He's gotta be a fan you, of Arnold. You can't get into that line of work and not be. Well, how can especially, you not be? How can you not be a fan? Of... The way The Rock did their paths to the top are, are are pretty similar in that you know The Rock became like the biggest wrestler in the world, where he surpassed the world of wrestling and became an actor, in, much in the way that Arnold Schwarzenegger became the greatest bodybuilder of all time. He over like he surpassed the world of bodybuilding and moved on to the world of acting, and he and and at his peak, Arnold Schwarzenegger was the biggest actor in the world. 
Of course, just, just like the Rock. Arnold, just like the Rock is the biggest actor in the world right now. Right. And I mean, both had political aspirations. I mean, I mean, the Governor was a thing, and I mean, people are always joking about the Rock potentially running for something at some he point. He would win. I bet my bottom dollar if the Rock ran for president, he would win. Like so many people wouldn't even look at this dude's policies, and and it's just because it's the fucking Rock, the People's yeah, Champ. Right. He would win. I would vote for the Rock. I, I would. Yeah. I don't even care. I don't even care what his policies are. Uh, if, if he was Donald Trump times five, I would vote for the Rock. <laughs> just because I want to say that I lived in a world where the fucking Rock was the president of the United States. It's crazy, bro. Um, I want to know that my president can deliver the people's elbow to any other world leader whenever he pleases. And he can properly sell a stunner. <laughs> Went from the <laughs> worst that, the, the, the worst selling stunner of all time to one of the best. <laughs> it, he's, um, not only that, he's like the, the bar. He set the bar for selling the stunner. Yeah. So, remake it with The Rock before he becomes president in four years. <laughs> Approximately four years' time. I And you know what? I don't even think that I would disagree with a lot of Rock's policies. It's been said that he's a Republican. A lot of people have said that he's a Republican. Um, but he just endo- endorsed Joe Biden before this election. That's true. He said that he's a political independent. Yeah. So. So, who knows? But yeah, I don't know what else to say about the film. I mean, we both said it's a blast. Um, I think that, like, really, like, if you like Arnold as much as, like, you do and, like, your brother does, like, if you haven't seen this, like, this it would be, like, an essential. Just to see, like, where he got his, like, start, you know? I think that no matter what, and I think all Arnold fans know this, and this is part of his appeal and why so many people love him, um, I think no matter what, Every Arnold Schwarzenegger movie has something. There's at least one scene in every movie where you're like, "Yeah, that was awesome." Uh, yeah, you, have, you, have, you haven't you haven't seen End of Days yet, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he says um, you're a fucking choir boy compared to me. That's the scene. I, I I might have been dozing off at that point, but okay. <laughs> you got to get to it at the end. I mean, there's literally a scene where Arnold Schwarzenegger fights Satan. So there it is. That's the scene. That's the part of the movie that is that it's awesome. He, he does his monologue before that. And if the rest of the movie could have matched that intensity and that and that awesomeness, would have been a good movie. But you can't keep it up. I mean, even in Red Heat, which I fucking hate, I can't stand that movie. But it starts off with the scene, the action scene in the hot spring, where yeah. Arnold's beating the shit out of people wearing only a towel. Yeah, there you go. Well, I mean, that's beyond awesome. hard, um, beyond hard. And stay hungry. There's the scene where he freaks out and like shakes that poor small woman and and throws her on the ground and then yeah. runs away screaming. Because she laughs at him when he's doing his poses. He's like, it is not funny! You know, like He says, like, you look like a gorilla or something, and he's, like, he like flips out. <laughs> Have you seen Stay Hungry all the way through? I've seen that clip where he just freaks out and, like, clip, throws dude. her. Yeah. Why aren't we watching Stay Hungry? I mean, I don't know. Let me see if it's streaming anywhere. We can swap that out with collateral damage, maybe. Well, I have it on VHS, regardless oh <laughs> so. uh, well either way stay hungry what are, i'm just trying to figure movies, out how i'm what gonna movies see are we watching up this month let the let the people know so coming up next week we're gonna have end of days okay um then after that um it'll either be junior or collateral damage depending on which order we watch them but i've already okay. seen end of days so we'll do that so we're only next. doing four there's only four weeks in January. Mm. It's Arnold month. Okay. I thought we were squeezing another one in, but are we just going to do four Stallone movies next month too? That's what we were doing. We were doing an extra Stallone week because there's only three weekends in February. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, depending on the analytics of these, I mean, the Arnold month could be a 
a yearly thing, or we could bring back Arnold Month whenever we want. I mean, who gives a shit? It's our show. We can do it in fucking April if we want. Yeah. Uh, April. April. <laughs> April. <laughs> April Schwarzenegger. April Schwarzenegger. Damn, that's what we should have done. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Jan, uh, January Arnold continues. Yeah. Next week on Two Nerds a podcast. You got anything else for the people before we ride off until the sunset, buddy? Um, I don't know, not necessarily. I mean, I feel like we've said a lot. I mean, did anything happen to you this week that was fun or exciting or just same old stuff? I mean, we kind of just jumped into it today. Like, I don't know. Like, did you have anything else to talk about? Um, on New Year's Eve, I drank my whole bottle of sparkling grape juice and felt like I was about to give birth. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, yeah, I just hung out with the wife on New Year's. We did a little group FaceTime with a few of her friends around 1130. Uh, saw Miles the other day. Finally got to see his new pad. Um, yeah, he, he revealed himself to you? He did. Now that he has his new girl, he hasn't. He's barely talked to me. Oh really? I, he's been talking to us about it. Yeah. But they're official. No, it's not. A, he says it's a. It's gonna be a couple months before he tries to lock anything down. But you know they're kicking it. So a couple months before he tries to lock anything down. That's not even possible. That's just ignorance, right there. You I mean, they're they're going on dates, but they're not. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right. By the time you've been going on dates for a couple of months, you're already official, even if you don't say it. Right. That's that's what he doesn't understand. Yeah. That's the thing that makes me mad, is that is when people would try to pull that benefit of the doubt thing, like a couple months down the line, where it's like, oh, but we've never been official. You know what I mean? To do some grimy stuff. Not saying that he would. But it's like, no, man, we've been going steady for a couple months. You don't have to say anything at that point. Yeah, I and, see what you mean. You know, like, so... They're they're official already, <laughs> in my opinion. It's official already. You can say, well, I'm not locking anything down for a couple months. I think they've you only are... hung out twice. What? I think they it's hung... only been... T- no, they, just, they were just hanging out yesterday. They hung out on New Year's Eve. They were together for New Year's Eve. I didn't know they hung out yesterday. I just knew it was... He literally posted on his story of them together on Instagram. I... I thought that this was a This is New very Year's personal Eve. for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find out if he actually listens to this then, so he'll know. <laughs> we'll find out what we call him out. Yeah, he posted on his story yesterday of him and her together. See, I thought they that was on... on New Year's Eve, which is not something I would do with someone that I'm not official with or thinking about being official with soon that I was just hooking up with, I, I would make it very clear that we're not hanging out on New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so there, there's Miles' uh, personal update for the podcast. I know No Star Reviews has been waiting to get an update on it for a while. On Midnight going, Miles. Yeah, yeah, what's been going on, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what else to say, yeah. What's up? She's shown me a very, very blurry... Michael Jordan action figure. It looked like a turtle, like it, like literally, because you can bear. Because we are still having the fake Skype backgrounds on right now, so he's just sort of like half blending into the background. He just looks like an alien. <laughs> well, he looks terrible in this because he doesn't have any facial hair. Oh uh, yeah, and his face just doesn't look like Michael Jordan's face at all. Yeah. The, the only reason I could tell that it's Michael Jordan is because it's a bald black man wearing a Toon Squad jersey that says 23. It's a pretty uh, pretty solid indication that you're referring to Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, but that could be an indication that I'm referring to LeBron James here pretty soon. Well, I think he's Ooh, wearing... I shots think he, fired at LeBron's hairline. I think he's My wearing... God. He's wear, I think he's wearing number six, though. For, for the Toon Squad? I think so. Well... Buddy, I think it's time we ride off into the sunset. All right, yeah, I think it's time we, we wrap this thing up here. Of course, if you guys are listening to this on any sort of podcast streaming site, make sure you're subscribing to the show. Leave us a rating, a review. Share the show with all of your friends, every single one of them. What? What's she screaming? Uh, she's screaming and fucking interrupting our outro here. 
That's fine. Um, but yeah, also subscribe on YouTube. Hopefully 2021 has some videos coming out from the both of us. We'll be doing some stuff. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I mean, looking forward to the rest of Jan U. Arnold. And this is Buddy the Bruiser signing out. And this is Dynamite Jared. I'll catch your ass down the road.